like to start with a quote from Dalai Lama. And he said, there are only two days in the year where nothing can be done. The one is called yesterday and the other one is called tomorrow. Today is a great day to start, to love, to believe, do, and mostly live. This is where my story starts. My name is Heinrich Popov, and it's a pleasure for me to be here. It's a pleasure for me to tell my story. Um, my story begins in a room, sitting with a doctor. I was nine years old. My parents sitting next to me. And the doctor, he was smoking a pipe. He was sitting there looking on, on his computer. And then he looked at my parents. He looked at the computer again. And the only thing he said was, oh, oof, okay. And then he looked at my parents again and then he said, the result of the biopsy is your son has cancer. And I'm like, whoa, okay. That's hard. But then he was keep on going. He looked at my parents again, looked at me again, and he said, you know what? This kind of cancer is a really rare one. We have three kids in our hospital, and the statistics says that out of these three kids, only one will survive. And then he made a break, looked at my parents, and he said, the biopsy of your son is the baddest one. I give him six months. What do you think about that? How, what do you think about that? Is, it, is that okay to, 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 to say it like this? When people hear this for the first time, they're like, what an idiot. You know what he did? He was honest. He saved my life. Because the other two kids, they were waiting for their chemotherapy. They were waiting in the room. My parents left my childhood. I was being able to run around, to play around. I was sick, but I, I didn't know the difference between having a broken arm or having cancer. If you can't change a situation, don't try to understand it. That's the biggest problem of people getting mature or adults. You know, I was nine years old when this happened to me and I'm thankful for that because I'm now working in the area with amputee people. And you know what the biggest problem is? Adults. Too much information in your brain. You're expecting something. You know something. You heard about something. You looked on YouTube how prosthetic looked like but you forget about yourself. This is the biggest problem. I went through the whole process of fighting against the cancer. And then we met with the doctor again in the same room. Again, same situation. But this time I was feeling good. I was able to walk around, no pain anymore. He looked again on the computer and he looked at my parents and he said, okay, this is something I've never expected. He was right. One out of three survived and it was me. And then I said, okay, whew, lucky. My life can go on. I survived, everything is good, chemotherapy is done. Then he looked again on my parents and he said, this kind of cancer is so rare when it comes the second time, it will come in the lungs and the brain. And this time he definitely won't have a chance to survive. I would recommend you to amputee his leg. I'm like, whoa. Fighting, struggling, still being a child. But this time I didn't know what to do. The doctor sent me some psychological pe people, doctors. You know what the biggest problem with the psychological doctors was? They tried to make me th thinking the same way they are thinking. And accepting something has something to do with understanding. 
If you need to accept the situation, you have to understand it. And I was working with one psychologist, the second one, and the third one. At the end, the doctor just sent me a guy who was already amputated. He came into the room and he was talking to me straight away. He looked at my face and he just answered me the questions I had. And then uh, my last question for him was, how does a prosthetic look like? And he stand up and put his pants down. I didn't know that he was an amputee. And in that situation, I said, Mom, Dad, that's okay. It's not so bad. Because this guy, he taught me everything what goes on in life with an amputee. He said to me, listen, it's in your hand. You can be positive or you can be negative with an amputation. The society will help you to be negative. You know how often I have to explain that I'm a happy and thankful person to people? When I, wearing sh when I wear shorts in the summer, people looked at me and then they feel sorry. I'm like, I don't want to feel sorry. I just want to be treated like a normal human being. And uh, from this situation, with this sentence, I told my parents, that this is okay to amputee myself, like to amputee my leg, to be fine, because I knew that it's in my hands. My parents made the decision to, to amputee. And uh, after my amputation, I lost my leg, yes, but I've never lost the passion for live my life. And uh, after my amputation, I thought I have all the bad stuff behind me. But you know what? Teenagers, kids, they are honest. They are hard. And they used my weakness to make themselves stronger. Um, this was a situation I really struggled a lot. I struggled more being a child and being a teenager than having cancer and losing my leg. Then, I used sport for rehabilitation. I knew that sport has nothing to do with having two legs or one leg. Sport has something to do with being the best player or being a worse player. And you know the situation in school when two persons have to pick a team? Which person they pick at the end? I was the guy who was looking at the teams and okay, there's one missing. Went to the team and asked if I can carry the water bottles in the beginning. That was tough because I had the passion for being an athlete. And then second situation in school again is who's missing in a soccer game always? A goalkeeper. No one wants to be a goalkeeper. Okay, the disabled person is being the goalkeeper. Yes, I'm, I'm, I came from the water-carrying boy to being the goalkeeper. Um, I start to feel successful. I start to turn my disability to an ability. And then one day there was a person missing on a field and they asked me to play. And you know what happened? I used my disability uh, in an unfair way, but that's okay. <laughs> um, running into a guy who has a Terminator leg, and he has his, the soccer ball on the side of a Terminator leg. You see all the metal and carbon fiber. You won't hit him hard, huh? because it's painful for you, it's not painful for me. And, I f I, and I st this was the time where I find out, okay, every situation has a good side and a bad side again, a positive side and a, a negative side. Yeah, and then through sports, I was playing soccer, but you know what happened in that situation when I was playing soccer? I tried to be normal, because everyone was expecting from me to be normal 
But what is normal today? Does anyone have a definition of being a normal person? Everyone expecting from you to be normal, not to be disabled. But no one can, can explain what's, what's normal. And uh, losing myself was another tough time because I was not happy with me. And then I turned 17. By that time, uh, one of the best German teams uh, were looking for a new youngster to, to get in the team because the, the old guy was running slower and slower and they need some fresh athletes. And I was playing a soccer game and the manager of the team, he was watching the soccer game and then he asked me to come to the team. And uh, I went to the team and I was asking what do disabled people run for 100 meter? And again, situation, a manager who's working with disabled people is not believing in me. He said, listen, just do the competition for the first time, try to reach the finish line, and then we will talk about time. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm an athlete, I'm not doing this. My first competition was tough, but I ran the 10th best time in the world. And that's, that's, that was the decision to make athletics. And then manager, the week after, the manager told me to go to my coach. He, he gave me the name of the coach. I went to the coach. And this coach, I asked him to be a para-athlete. I want to I do disabled sport. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm not coaching disabled people. I looked at him and I was like, again, like the doctor, what an idiot. I went to the manager again and I asked him, what's going on? Why? Why is he telling me he's not coaching disabled athletes? He said, yes, no, 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 something is wrong. He's the coach. I went again to him and asked him again. And then he looked at me and he asked me a question. What do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to run fast and I want to do long jump. Okay. Then he looked at me and said, Riz, that's okay. I'm your coach. He was the one who was not making any difference. He told me, you have the same blocks. You have the same sand pit. But you have a different situation in training. And you know what he did? He put me into a group with girls. How bad is this? <laughs> Losing against girls? My disability was not bad at that point, but it was worse to lose against girls. My friends were asking me to go to competition. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not running. I feel not good. But then I ran and lose against girls. That was a hot motivation for me. He did the right thing. He just put me into, he, he was believing in me. He just put me into the right spot and he was coaching me. He said to me, listen. We have exercises for sprinting and long jumping. Behind every exercise, there is a goal. If we can't do the exercise, we're not throwing away the goal. We have to find a way to reach the goal. And then we will build up your career. You know what happened? these two things uh, who wants to touch it it's just just like you know these are the two medals 2012 and 2016 from rio and if you touch it you will be you, you will think about me like that i'm an idiot because i have lots of uh scarves inside um broken metal but, you know, this one, Rio 2016, uh, I was doing a party and um, I was on a party and a guy asked me to look at the medal. I gave it to him and he dropped it. And then this happens. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but this party was one of the best evenings I've ever had. And every time I look at the medal and I see this, I remember the evening. That's okay. You can have scarves like I have, 
one leg, but I remember the good things about that, not remember just the bad things. I give it to you if you want to touch it, just like keep on going, touch it, do whatever you want to do. Uh, <laughs> see, thi this one, this one, yeah, yeah, if we will have a good party tonight, then you can drop it. If we, if you're not, if we won't have a good party, then please do not drop it. Uh, you can, you can, you can shake it. You know what it is? Try to, try to understand it. What is it? Yes. Yeah. Brazilians are really smart. Eh? It's for the first time they do this. Yeah. Some of the blind people can't read, but they can hear. And uh, gold has a different sound than silver and bronze. And yeah. Yeah, this is, this is my life. And this is the mindset I've put into creating my own tomorrow. You know what? The situation doesn't look like the way people think about it. Situation look like you think about it. And if there will be a doctor today who wants to give me my leg back and I have to give the life I have, what do you think I would decide? Yes, I don't want to have my leg. No, no. I don't want to have my leg back again. Because tough, tough, this, this tough situation in my life made the person I am today. And you have to believe in yourself. Really believe in yourself. And I started with a quote and I would like to, to finish with a quote. Bruce Lee said, you know Bruce Lee? Be shapeless, be formless, like water. Does anyone know that? Yes. This is my quote. He said, A cup becomes a cup if you put water into it. A glass becomes a glass if you put water, uh, water into it too. A teapot becomes a teapot if you put tea into it. Water can crash. Water can flow. Be water, my friend. That's what he said. And this is what every one of you guys have to, be, to do. Be unique. Don't try to be normal. If you are a unique person, then you can trust yourself. Be honest. Be creative. Be open for new opp opportunities. If people think something is negative, you can make it positive. We need people like, the, like you guys for tomorrow. And this will be the trends of tomorrow. It's all about the mindset. It's not about how a, a person looks like. It's about the mindset. Thank you very much. <laughs>